Hey everybody, so before I get back to the diesel ranger, I'm going to build that. It's a log arch. Uh, the hubs are going to be one ton hubs off of a Ford Super Duty. And to fit them onto it, I'm going to use this piece of quarter inch plate, drill holes in it so then I can weld it onto the frame here. I picked up all the steel this morning. So I got to get two of these cut out and then I'll show you step by step from there on out. So there's those two. So now I have to take and holes through there onto the plate here and that's what I'll use this for it would be easier to use my knuckle line it up run a punch through the back side so I can locate my holes drill them and I can bolt that onto there and then the tires will bolt onto the hub on the outside I just have to make offset to kick out at an angle so it'll clear the rim and the tire and then I can start building the frame so I'm gonna drill these four holes now locate them drill those four holes on each one so then I can bolt the hub to this plate and then we'll move on to the frame so this is how I'm doing that line that all up where I want it put that centering punch in there didn't have the right size metric one so I just put a little tape on it so it fits in there nice and tight and then whack do all those and then you end up with your marks on the plate like that and I'll just drill them okay they're drilled they definitely aren't perfect but they'll bolt on now the town I live in is really small and I don't have any metric bolts this size so I'll have to cut these down and weld nuts on them and use these studs for bolts. It's all done, except for bolts, obviously. I still gotta get bolts, but it fits in there. It's got clearance. So now I'm gonna have to make the frame. The frame part's gonna weld onto here. And I'm starting to lay it out. Gotta get this laid out how I want it. I think I'm gonna do a flat spot, come down, cut that at an angle come straight down and then I'll have to come in a little bit and then after I come in then I'll have to come back out <laughs> so I can weld to that here's where I'm at I cut a 2x4 block so I could kick it out I looked all over town I can't find any more bolts so I'm just gonna order those bolts and put all new ones in there just because I want it to be not sketchy. Oh, I got that all tacked together, just tacking it all so I can get it nice and straight. I cut this other piece over here, so I'll tack that one foot long two by two chunk on here, and then I'll tack all this side together, and then I'll bolt it both to the wheels so then I can see how it looks when it's all bolted together. If I like it or not, I'll weld it up solid. If not, I can easily cut it back apart, being just tacked on there. That's where I'm at now. So just get it all nice and square and straight, so it'll be reasonably towable, so I can tow it down the road if I want to, because I got to tow it home anyways, so. All right, I got that all tacked together. I did solid weld a portion of it. Basically the whole arch is fully welded and then these are just tacked together so I can get all my measurements. I measured square from here to here, here to here. So this is square, welded these in, measured across, strapped it down so that I could move it around here to here, here to here. So that's all square out to there. So it should tow nice and straight. If there's any toe, there's just a little bit of toe in, like maybe a sixteenth of an inch. But I'm not worried about that, wearing out tires, going down the road. 
because it won't be on the highway very much anyways. Maybe a couple miles a trip or something. Now I gotta take and put the final piece in that's gonna come over and then down. So one more piece. Okay, everything's all together for the framing. What isn't totally burnt in, I would burnt in most of it. That's kind of dark. Most of it's all burnt in. I just have to finish burning in this piece, that piece, around there, and then I gotta cap the ends. All the ends of it are still open. I'll cut this off at this angle, and I'll cap that end. Cut that off at that angle, cap that end, and then I gotta mount the winch on it. The winch will go right here, so you can crank it. There'll be a pulley right here, so the winch will go off the pulley and down, so I can easily just stand here and hand crank it. So that's where I'm at now. I'll knock these off, weld caps on those, burn everything in, and then I'll let you see what it looks like from there. A couple little bonus additions that I put on it. I put some bracing there just because I didn't want it to bend. I put some, I don't even know what you'd call them, they'd be nerf nets if they were on a four wheeler, like tree kickers so it doesn't smack the tire straight on and bend them. I put some chain hooks, well, those chains go through those and you set it down and it will make a belly chain so you can let some pressure down so if it sags down it pulls these together instead of spreading them out. Figured it would be a good idea. Got the holes drilled for the winch. Everything's already all gusseted up. I put plates on both sides. There, there. That is a gusset besides the chain lock. And then I put a gusset on there. So this thing's way overbuilt. If it's not, I'll be very surprised. There's the primer on it. We're gonna go with my favorite color, the color I painted the band mill, so it's going to match the band mill. So here's a little bit better, you can see how I was talking, put the chain through and the chain locks into the groove so that you can take the weight off the load if you want to, just lower it down on the chain a little bit so it's not trying to peel these open but it's way over built it's 360 inch with plating on the welds and but it's still smart to have that in case you're going to go down the road with it and you can just strap everything down nice secure everything good i did forget after i got it all primed up i have to fasten a pulley onto there so the winch cable will go around the pulley and down. So I gotta weld this. I'm probably gonna make new side plates for this. I basically just bought it for the inside pulley. So this is really thin. This is only like 550 pound rated. So I'll just take the pulley out of there and I'll make thicker brackets. And then I'll leave it so I can remove the pin and then I'll probably put a cage over it so that the cable can't just flip off if you hit a bump or something. But that's where we are for now. Got to weld that on, then I'm going to throw some paint on it, and then I'll probably show you working out in the woods. Thought I'd just do a little bit of video of it all painted up. So there it is, all coated. Ellis Chalmers orange. I like that color. That's the same color I painted the band mill. And I did get that welded on. So everything is good, coated. 
I just gotta let her dry and then it'll be time for final assembly. I ordered new bolts from Fast and All. They'll be here tomorrow. But I'm gonna get this put together and get it brought home today so I don't have to be here anymore. I don't wanna push my luck anymore. Um, just standard nuts. Picked them up from hardware store. So I'll just hammer them onto these studs like I did the other one. Just take and hear a little smack smack with a hammer, leave some room and then I'll just weld just like on these ones. It'll get me home. Maybe I'll even pull a log or two out of the woods with it today just to see how it works before I put the bolts in. I'm sure it'll be fine, I just won't max it out. But assembly time. I'm gonna time lapse this, I think. Got her all assembled. We're all good. Ready to drag it home and give it a shot. I didn't put any strap points on it because I figured when I winch it all the way up to the top, I can just run a strap right around this main post. We'll see how that works. If I don't like it, I can make a adjustable drop down so I can drop them down onto the log and then just strap around the drop downs. We'll see. I just didn't want to get too fancy. I wanted to get it done quick and dirty. So for now I'll just run it up to wherever and then just set it back down so the weight's on the chain and I'll just wrap a strap around here or if there are a bunch of them I'll just run them all the way up against the top run a strap around them. So I could probably do several in here I'm thinking anyways, we'll see how that works. Might have to roll a strap under them, bundle them up, and then run the cable around them, lift the whole bundle up. But that's what my thoughts are, so. We'll drag it home now and I'll get a video of me running some logs out the woods. So we'll see, I got a white oak I believe and a couple other trees that are already down on the trail, kind of accessible. We'll run out and grab one of those see how this thing works I am worried it's gonna be a little bit wide I mean it's wider than the wheeler it's like I can't remember what it was 62 inches or something like that so I'll get a measurement on it but we'll go give this thing a shot see how it works oh well, we made it home it's all in one piece hooked up to the wheeler found out already that I need to get a chainsaw scabbard and some kind of tool something whether I put a toolbox on the wheeler or unless I put a chainsaw scabbard on here somewhere so I can go thunk 
can just stick the chainsaw bar into it somewhere on here and then maybe even for the cantilever and a picaroon and stuff because it definitely sucks to carry everything through the woods. Uh, I did a little pre-cutting because I didn't want you to have to see all the sketchy stuff that I was doing because there's two widow makers down there that are ginormous. We'll go grab them now, I'll show you.
there's the rest of them. That's a really big ash right there. It's like way bigger than this. It's probably, I'd say 22, 23 inches at the butt. And then there's probably another saw bolt in this maple. Maybe even two, because there's another one that's stuck right there still. And then, so I'll grab as many saw bolts out of this stuff as I can. And then I'll burn the tops. And I'll burn the butt cuts that was pretty hollow and that was punky through this one and probably most of that one but that one was okay but it's already firewood so there's the house I just came down that back trail all the way along there back down around through and then back around here and now we'll bring it up to the house and drop it off by the sawmill so it's not terribly big. What do we got? Can't even measure it. It's only 15 inches. So it was pretty big at the butt, but like I had said, I had to cut those few blocks off the end because it was hollow. But that's not bad. 15 inches down to about 13 and a half. Here's the mill. That's why I painted it orange. It matches the mill that I made. This is a homemade mill. So now I can go out back and run logs up and cut them on the mill. I'm trying to get materials together to build a, a cabin. So maple will be pretty nice. Don't know what I'll use it for yet. Cabinets, mm, I don't know. Tongue and groove, probably. But that's it. Have a great day. Yeah.